Let me set the scene here. A physician who is overworked and short on supplies, a sick mother and a child who are stuck in quarantine. A first-time expecting mother who is reaching the end of her pregnancy and her husband who has just lost his factory job. These are some of the five principal storylines that are followed in a gripping documentary film titled Wuhan, Wuhan, all about navigating life in Wuhan City at the onset of COVID-19 lockdown. But let me give you a taste for yourself. Take a look. 要放這裡然後我要搭在這裡我們的手要這樣子你不要你不要一種扭秧歌的表情看著我然後你就可以讓我轉圈圈不是 Absolutely beautiful. This acclaimed documentary has been put together through the painstaking post-production work led by director Yung Chang. And we are now being joined via video call by him all the way from Toronto, Canada, to find out more about how it all came together and what this experience was like. Yung, a very good morning. Welcome on our side of the world. So good to be connecting with you as part of this, this new global village that we find ourselves in. How are you? I'm very good. It's uh, it's about eleven. It's quarter to. It's almost midnight here in Toronto, and it's uh, great to be in in discussion with you. This is lovely. Thank you. Um, uh, is it is it right that I feel all emotional after watching just kind of thirty seconds of of what <laughs> looks like a beautiful film? How how does it make you feel when you see? And I know that was just a snippet, but do you still go into the emotional journey of what you've you've achieved? Yeah, well, the clip you showed was the, was the kind of the, uh, the 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 couple that we follow as the through line through the movie, and uh, and they're just everyday people. That was the factory uh, worker who lost his job or furloughed, and and that was his wife who was uh, nine months pregnant, just about to give birth, and and so we're really anchored in their story. It is very emotional. It's very human, and I think relatable. Clearly, we are experiencing, I'm going to use the word of the year last year, unprecedented times as the world began to, to shut down around us. That time especially was really strange. How did the opportunity to follow these five specific characters in Wuhan and weave it into this documentary kind of come about? What sparked the project? So I'm, I'm the director locked down in Toronto. It, it's, it's April 2020, and I receive... Uh, I've, I've inherited 300 hours of footage that my crew filmed in advance between February and April, uh, March of, uh, of 2020. And uh, it is my responsibility to sort of see the film through. And, uh, and, and I was entrusted with the footage uh, to put it together, to piece it together. And so uh, it was a very emotional journey for, for me and, and my crew in the post-production world and like sort of sitting in all that footage, which was very emotional because we had just begun our lockdown in end of March, 2020, and we're witnessing the kind of rollout of what was about to happen and uh, through the eyes of the characters in Wuhan, Wuhan. I can remember taking that breath. Actually, it, it happened on our show where I asked one of our, uh, our regular doctors who, who works in communicable diseases what to expect. And this was, I think, when it had first kind of reached Europe and was starting to spread through Madrid, and he said, write the year off. And I think, unfortunately, one of the, the worst results of the COVID-19 pandemic is the anti-Asian racism that has been developed as part of the narrative that was very much driven, unfortunately, in the US. But how does this film set to tackle that and return humanity to everyone who has suffered during this pandemic? Because it has been an equalizer, man. We've all gone through it. Whether you're a superstar in Hollywood, whether you're a factory worker in Wuhan, everyone has been affected. It's exactly that. A week before I got the call to finish this film, I had encountered, my daughter and I encountered a, an anti-Chinese racist uh, incident, and uh, it was shocking and hurtful. 
uh, that that emotion, the anger that I felt towards that moment, and uh, channeled through into the into the film as we began the editing process in April 2020. And it, at that time, it was all about you know what uh, the ex president of the U.S. was saying, you know, China flu and the huh. and kung flu and China virus and all that. And so uh, we channeled this idea through, which was that what you touched upon, which is where we're based on a quote that we found from a seventh century Japanese government official who wrote a letter to a Chinese government official back in the day. And he said that, you know, we may live in different lands, but we're all live under the same sky. And, and essentially that was the theme of the film. It was to depoliticize uh, this, the, the virus and, and show the humanistic side of the story and to rip away past the salacious headlines and, and show the, the, you know, the heartbeat of a city like Wuhan. The fact that the film can make headway and, and travel around the world, uh, I think just goes to show that there's a reception to seeing stories through the eyes of, uh, you know, empathy. And, and that's what we do as, uh, I think, filmmakers, documentary filmmakers, is to really show a, a three-dimensional uh, character study of a place or people. And that's what we're trying to do with this movie. And, and I'm so happy and, uh, and very appreciative. Thank you so much for, for releasing this beautiful piece into the world. All the best of luck with the, the next phase of its rollout and the South African audiences and broader African audience getting a chance to enjoy it. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and for, for creating what looks like a truly magical piece of film. Thank you so much. I hope everyone gets to see it. Thank you. Ah, thanks to Young and his team for giving the world a direct insight into what was happening at the epicenter of what is and what will remain to be one of the most life-changing events in world history.